The second topic is about HDL cholesterol, the so-called good cholesterol, and some recent data questioning the good in good cholesterol. The concept of bad and good cholesterol in the public comes from the fact that levels of LDL cholesterol are correlated with increased risk of heart attack. Higher the level, the higher the risk. In contrast, for HDL cholesterol, the higher the level, the lower the risk. So these are correlations in the population. Because of these two correlations, one is called bad cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol, the other is called good cholesterol, the HDL cholesterol. The problem when you see a correlation like this with a factor X associated with disease Y in the population is that correlation does not mean that one thing causes another. So it's impossible to distinguish cause from mere correlation when you just see two variables related to each other in the population. A silly example of this is gray hair. So if you have gray hair, you're at, there's, it's, the more gray hair you have, the higher likelihood you're going to have a heart attack. So gray hair is correlated with risk of heart attack, but that doesn't mean gray hair causes heart disease, or better yet, cutting off somebody's gray hair would reduce their risk of heart disease. It's simply a marker. And the challenge over the years has been for LDL and HDL, are they causal factors or are they markers of something else? For LDL, there's no doubt that it's a causal factor that basically the LDL particle directly leads to the blockage in the heart arteries. For HDL, there has been a lot of uncertainty about whether it's a marker or actually a causal factor. Then the question becomes, how do you figure this out? How do you actually figure out if a variable that's correlated, in the, two variables that are correlated in the population, one causes another? There are only two approaches, really, that you can take to sort out cause from correlation in humans. One is a randomized controlled trial where you basically take a group of people, you give them a medicine that changes, for example, HDL, and another group where they, it doesn't, doesn't not, they're given a sugar pill. Then you follow over time to see if your intervention that changed HDL actually had an effect on disease risk. The second idea, second option, is something called genetics, human genetics. And here, the idea is, if you have a mutation, naturally, that changes HDL, for example, for exa you know, some proportion of people who naturally have higher HDL because of their mu a mutation in a gene, if HDL was causal for disease, then those people should have lower risk of heart disease, right? And you can test that. So <coughs> for both genetics and randomized controlled trials, the evidence of whether HDL is causal or not over the last five years, a lot of data has come in that basically suggests that HDL is not a causal factor, but rather just a marker of risk. The pieces of evidence that have come in from the human genetic side is people who carry mutations that elevate their HDL lifelong in any one of several HDL genes, they have the same risk of heart attack as those who don't carry the mutations. And this was a very surprising result. In parallel with that, there have been about five randomized controlled trials, all designed to raise HDL cholesterol in patients and lower risk of heart disease. Each of the trials, the medicine has raised HDL cholesterol. In each case, the heart disease rates are the same in those who got the medicine and those who didn't, really suggesting that Again, HDL is not a risk factor, but a causal, not a causal risk factor, but rather a marker of risk. It turns out this does not mean that you should not have your HDL cholesterol checked. So the issue is that if you have low HDL cholesterol, you are at increased risk for heart attack. Just like if you have gray hair, on average, you are at increased risk for heart attack, but it's not because of the gray hair. And same thing for HDL. The low HDL cholesterol correlated with increased risk of heart disease is not because of the HDL cholesterol, it's probably something else. So this is really emerging evidence over the last few years that we really should rethink the way we've approached HDL. In their daily practice, what this means is it's a useful risk marker 
it can identify patients at higher risk, but don't treat the HDL cholesterol. Don't try to give medicines that have the sole purpose of raising the HDL cholesterol. What's happened over the last few years is we've been very good at lowering the bad cholesterol with statin medications. The LDL goes way down. Then the patients often will have low HDL cholesterol, and people have been desperately looking for medicines that will raise the HDL with the, with the idea, with the thought, that that should reduce risk. Well, we can basically say that, that you shouldn't be doing that. You, until there may be in the future some medicine that raises HDL and also lowers risk of heart attack, but we don't have any such medicines right now. So what I do for patients after getting their LDL cholesterol low and the patient still has low HDL cholesterol, I know that person is at increased risk for disease. So I'm trying my best to basically figure out what can I do to basically lower that patient's risk. Well, it turns out there's a lot of common sense things that actually can help modestly change something like the HDL cholesterol, that risk marker. Things like increased physical activity, losing weight, if you smoke, stopping smoking. All those chain things are good for you in many ways. In addition, they'll l increase your HDL cholesterol a little bit. So the bottom line is don't chase the HDL number in terms of with treatment, medicine, me with medical treatment. It's a very hard sell. Um, when I started medical school, I was told that any thing that increases your HDL cholesterol must be good for you. And we can safely disregard that concept right now. And we need to disregard that concept. And it might take 10, 15 years, 20 years to actually get this washed out of people's brains. Because this, it's so ingrained that there's bad cholesterol and good cholesterol. And there's definitely bad cholesterol. We just need to get rid of the concept of good cholesterol. The question then becomes, if HDL cholesterol, low HDL cholesterol is a marker of increased risk, what is it marking? What is that risk due to? And we now have evidence that the risk is actually due to another lipid fraction in the blood that most people get measured, and that's the triglycerides. That it's actually the triglyceride-rich lipoproteins that often travel with the low HDL. So low HDL is often correlated with higher tri triglycerides. The same patients have both. That that basically it's the triglyceride-rich lipoproteins that are leading to the plaque, the atherosclerotic plaque, in these patients with low HDL. And so the implication of that is that we should look for approaches to safely lower the triglyceride-rich lipoproteins in these patients, and that may have benefit in terms of heart disease risk, rather than what we've been doing for the last 30 years, which is chasing the HDL cholesterol and developing, trying to develop medicines to raise the HDL cholesterol.